inside the host cell. So we need to cut all the genetic parts apart. See if we are cutting all the things apart. If we are cutting all the things that will generate the viral seed coat, viral code and all proteins, what will end up? This will not end up with in production of viruses. Right? So for supplying all the functions of this deleted gene, we must have a packaging cell line. We must have a cell line. Though that cell line will in turn produce all the deleted function of the gene. It will produce the proteins that will help to produce a capsid of the virus. But this is the virus gene. This gene excludes the functionality to produce any capsid protein. So this will not produce any capsid to en engulf this particular gene of interest. So in turn, we are using a another cell line to donate these things. So this is our cell line. Where is, is we are also having a genome. In this genome, we don't have the virulent factors, but instead we incorporate some of the genes. Those genes can produce some of the proteins which can produce the viral capsid, like GAG, Paul, and ENV in case of retrovirus. Remember? GAG, Paul, ENV. These are examples. This, these proteins can produce the seed uh, coat. This can produce a coat for this. Uh, viruses. So these proteins will be provided to this uh, cell. So what we can do, we take this viral genome with our target gene in the middle or in somewhere else and then take it and in insert it into this new packaging cell line. So the new cell line which is complementary, which is supplementary. We take this gene of interest with the viral genes, viral gene packaging signal this because it, this gene must have the packaging signal right now incorporate into this genome in this uh, this helper genome now the helper genome is present in the packaging cell line so first job is to incorporate this into this helper uh, genome or the packaging cell line now what it does packaging cell line will provide all the necessary proteins for producing the capsid of the virus on the other hand this uh, new uh, viral gene is providing the signal for packaging so signal for packaging is absent in the helper genome. Remember, this is minus. So signal for uh, packaging is absent, but all the production of the code proteins are present. But here signal is present, code proteins are absent. So they are complementary in nature. So what we are doing, they are giving this, this uh, viral gene sequence with our insert uh, of interest, giving us the signal for packaging, helper genome providing the proteins for packaging. Now, both of them working together, they produce a fully functional virus except or excluding the capacity of replicating inside the host cell okay now replication deficiency of these viruses ensures the safety of viral vectors okay now these specialized cell lines are called the packaging cell lines they are engineered to replace the function of a deleted viral gene or for the production of the recombinant viruses we call this recombinant virus because the viral uh, vectors we are getting here they are having genes but the genes uh, are of uh, and also some in desired insert but these genes whatever we are having are uh, they don't have any gene for the replication inside the host cell okay so that's why there lies the importance of the packaging cell line okay now if we look here we can find it so this is the modified virus so that's how we can produce the modified virus vector okay so here we are having the modified viral rna we can incorporate insert it then it can go and can insert into our target cell okay so these things can happen but for the insertion also we need some complex proteins that can in, in integrate with this uh, dna or rna whatever coming from the virus if it is retrovirus then this rna will be producing a dna and the dna will along with some of these uh, protein comp factors will go and insert itself into the nuclear genome okay now removed virus genes are inserted into the genome of the packaging cell and can be expressed into this other cells or cells of our interest okay so here replicase enzymes encoded in the vector ensures the production of many copies of the defective vectors genome okay so this is a very important part again so it is called uh, so a defective vector with a deleted capsid protein gene is introduced into the pcs so what is going on again the simple process we have seen here it is again illustrated here a defective vector 
with a deleted capsid protein gene is incorporated in the PCL or the packaging cell line. The replicase enzyme encoded in the vector ensures that the production of many copies of the defective vector's genome is done. Then the capsid protein gene encoded in the packaging cell genome is also transcribed and its mRNA translated to produce the capsid proteins. Okay, so capsid proteins are made and then the capsid proteins will going to uh, they will go to uh, coat uh, the uh, gene of our interest along with the viral genomes and the packaging virus will be produced. Uh, now when we are talking about the viral vectors there will be reactivations and we can have reactivants. Now what do you mean by these reactivations? Okay, the interaction between a vector and a host cell genome cannot be completely eliminated. So what is happening in this case? In the process of recombination to produce the viruses, the defective therapeutic vector can receive the deleted viral gene back sometimes not most of the time so the genes can are deleted right but sometimes what happens during this complementation uh, the therapeutic vector can receive the deleted gene back now if they receive the deleted gene back the virus that they are going to produce the recombinant virus that they are going to produce may end up with the genetic portion that can cause the viral infection okay so in those cases the viruses that uh, will be produced after this uh, reassociation of the deleted gene will be called reactivants okay and they can lose their therapeutic property due to this reactivation now they will become the normal wild type virus okay and they can start destroying cells now uh, when you are talking about viruses again we must have talked about lytic and lysogenics so non-lytic viruses including retroviruses and lentiviruses produce virions from the cellular membranes of an infected cells leaving the host cell relatively intact okay because they are non-lighting so the retrovirus or lentiviruses produce the virions from the cellular member membranes uh, right because they produce the virions from the cellular membrane so the process is something like that uh, say this is the cell and then the virus uh, particles start to form from the cellular membrane and at the end of the day we are having vehicles like that okay so it's a bad drawing but still I think it will help you to understand so say this is the viral genome so let us take the genome so these are the viral gene parts viral gene parts here comes and viral gene parts are incorporated and they bulge out from the cell like this okay so they are taking the cell membrane to produce the coat of these viruses and can come out in case of some of the retrovirus and lentivirus so they won't associated with the destruction of the cell destruction of the host cell okay but on the other hand in case of lytic viruses like including human adenovirus and herpes simplex virus families adenovirus or herpes simplex viruses uh, it, they end up with uh, the lysis of the cell so the destroy of the infected cell after the replication and the virion production is happened okay so if we're using this packaging cell lines for the non-lytic viruses we can use it again and again if we're using lytic uh, for the vi lytic viruses uh, we cannot use most of the time so uh, one time one go and then we need to produce again another uh, cell line culture and do it again okay something like that now what are the drawbacks of the viral vectors now viruses can in uh, so the um, they may uh, carry the genes into the body but they might uh, healthy as well as cancer cells okay so what can happens in this case sometimes uh, uh, as we are utilizing viruses they can trigger the immune response inside our body this is a major problem throughout the time okay another possibility is that that the new gene might be inserted in a wrong location in the DNA possibly causing harmful mutations in the DNA okay so uh, the effect will be uh, dangerous instead of remedying something Okay, and also the delivered DNA can be introduced into the parent's uh, reproductive cell. Is uh, so as it uh, will be inserted in the reproductive cells, it will be trans. Uh, it will be uh, transferred to the future generations. Now this could be positive or negative. It can lead to a positive effect if uh, the thing is right. If it is wrong, it can lead to the negative effect. The transferred genes could be overexpressed, producing so much of the missing proteins. So the missing proteins previously 
will create uh, uh, was causing problem but now after the transfer of the gene it, it can be overexpressed sometimes now if, if it is overexpressed this overexpression can lead to the production of so many missing proteins now in each of these biological systems little or very high both things are dangerous so very low and very high both things are dangerous so we have to maintain a homeostasis in everywhere in the biology right so here again uh, if uh, overexpression happens and huge amount of missing proteins are being produced then again it will lead to devastating effects so these things can happen okay so we need to be very careful about all of this uh, these things that we are talking okay so in this particular discussion we have seen the importance of viral vectors disadvantages of viral vectors and also how the viral vectors can be produced in the future discussions we will be dealing with each of the type of viral vectors their advantages their disadvantages in the genetic disorder treatment in the gene therapy okay so i hope this will help you thank you very much bye